right. my book after I told you not to. I didn't hurt it. I was just reading it. Big cat, big cat. This is our house and you're do as we say. And this. That will teach you to take my things. Get your ears clipped. In view of the bad traits described in her last letter, we must teach her to control her wicked, rebellious nature. You understand, Miss Devil? Yes, Mr. Brockerhead. I insist upon strict obedience. You will be severely punished if you try any of your deceitful tricks here. I'm not deceitful. Silence. There, Miss Temple, is an uncontrollable tongue. You see, her art was right. Do you know what happens to the wicked when they die? Oh, yes, sir. They go to and burn. Do you know how to avoid that? Oh, yes, sir. Keep away from lightning and take very good care of your health. Mm. Her aunt warned me of a vicious temper. Keep a firm hand. Take her to her class.
And each time the earth revolves around the sun, another year has passed. Is that quite clear? Yes, yes Mr. Mayor. Now then, Mary Lake, how long does it take the earth to go around the sun? I, I didn't hear the question. Step out here. Why didn't you hear the question? What were you doing? Well, I, uh... This is an outrage. Miss L, how dare you allow such things to go on in your class? You come with me, Ella. I am capable of controlling my pupils, Mr. Brockhurst. I shall punish Mary myself. Report of my study at once, Miss L. Go to your seat, Mary. I'll talk to you later. What do you mean by interfering with my discipline? These children need a little affection and understanding. They get too much discipline. I'll decide what's needed here. You defied me once too often. You're dismissed. Get out. I'll get out. Gladly. I've had enough of your charity. I've scrubbed and stitched and slaved for everything I ever got from you. I wish I could take every one of these poor, starved orphans away from you. You cruel, stingy child beater. And something be done about the way they're treated. Get out. Get out. You ought to be tarred and feathered, you ugly old crocodile. Jane, dear, what happened? I finally found courage to tell him what I thought. I called him an ugly old crocodile. Brocklehurst. He dismissed me. Just think. I'm leaving this place at last. I'm going to miss you. But what are you going to do? Don't worry, dear. With a small inheritance, my uncle left me. I shall manage until I find something. Have a drop. I'll have a drop myself. So you're the new governess of Stormfield Hall, huh? Well, young woman, take my advice. Mind your P's and Q's and stick to your governess. Mind yours and stick to your driving. I'm already late waiting for you to come out of the tavern. <laughs> All right, little one. This is the name, please. Oh, Richmond, you'll live the less. As bright as May Day morn. Who's... Do hurry. Uh, I'll show you some speed, my lady. My limited pull, that's me. Applaud, Daisy! Peoples of the woods. Oh, Daisy. What do you mean by frightening my horse? Your horse frightened me. My ankle. Thank you. May I ask where you're going? Thornfield Hall. Indeed. And what are you going to do there? It's any of your business. I'm the new governor. Thank you. But my dear, 
Yes. Whatever possessed you to walk all that distance when you had to carry? The meadows were so beautiful. I preferred to walk. Your lesson? French, German, drawing, music. You're quite accomplished, aren't you? I'm sure Mr. Rochester will approve. And who, may I ask, is Mr. Rochester? The child's uncle and guardian. Oh, I thought she was your child. No. I'm Fairfax, the housekeeper. I've been with the family for many years. I'll bring Adele in. If you please, miss, I'd like to beg your pardon for this afternoon and to thank you, miss, for not telling us. Don't mention it. What's your name? Samuel Poole. You're humble, sir. That's all, Samuel. Yes. And seeing you've been so nice, miss, may I suggest that you keep your door locked at night? Adele, this is Miss Eyre, your new governess. How do you do, Miss Eyre? How do you do, Adele? What's your first name? Jane. Jane Eyre. I like that name. And I like you, too. You're young and pretty, and not old and cross-looking, like my other governess. She'll do. <laughs> I'm glad you approve of me. Perhaps you'd like to show Miss Eyre around while her room is being prepared. Lovely. Come, Miss Eyre. I'll show you the house. Very well. I'd love to. I do hope you like it here. I'm sure I shall. <laughs> Lovely. In this room, Uncle Edward has the most beautiful party. Then I'm allowed to come down and meet all the guests. And I have so much fun. Do you like parties? Well, I've never been to one. Never been to a party? I'll ask Uncle Edward to invite you to the next one. You're very kind. Come, Miss Anne. I'll show you upstairs. And the kitchen. That's the north wing over there. No one is allowed to go up there. What are you doing here? Uh, this is Miss Eyre, my new governess. How do you do? I was just showing her around. You belong on the other side of the house. You know you should not come here. Disagreeable woman. Who is she? That's Sam Poole's wife, Grace Poole. Oh, what does she do here? Oh, she sews and helps around the house. Adele, Miss Eyre. Your room is ready. I thought perhaps you'd like to freshen up after your journey. Thank you. Run along to the nursery, dear. I'll see you shortly, Adele. Very well. I'll show you your room. I think you'll find you have everything you need here. I'm sure I shall. Oh, Mr. Rochester wishes you to have tea with him in the drawing room. Thank you, Mrs. Perfect.
Good evening. I'm Edward Rochester. Good evening, sir. You sit here, Miss Anne. Thank you. Will you pour the tea? Certainly. I must apologize for my rudeness this afternoon. I didn't oh, know don't that... apologize. I was the one who was rude. How many, please? Two. Your tea, sir. Thank you. How's your anchor? Much better, thank you. Have you seen your pupil? Oh, yes, she's charming. She's spoiled, and I fear a very poor student. But she seems quite intelligent. I'm sure we get along very well. Is anything the matter? Well, this is all so strange. So overwhelmed after the orphanage. Oh, you must forget about the orphanage. Thornfield's your home from now on. Mrs. Fairbanks tells me that you're very accomplished. Do you sing? A little. Would you sing for me? If you wish. Please. Serenade. Schubert. be very happy here, monsieur.
was that? Nothing, my dear. Just one of the servants. Grace, stop the disturbance, please. Yes, Mrs. Fairfax. <laughs> Rochester, how did you get up there? <laughs> well, what do you mean by running away in the middle of your lesson? Come down at once. I caught Miss Jane. My foot's caught. Well, I don't know how I'm going to reach you. Climbing part of the botany lesson. Uncle Edward, help! My foot's caught. Her foot's caught. Her foot's caught. So I gather. Allow me. Oh, thank you. And now, you little monkey. And where would you like this baggage delivered, Miss Eyre? The schoolroom, please. She must be punished. Can't I be punished tomorrow when Uncle Edward's gone to London? <laughs> no. Quite right. The spoiling must stop. I quite agree. Oh, please, Uncle Edward. You know, you're growing up, young lady. You're getting heavy. Please, Uncle Edward, take me to London with you. Not this time, my sweet. London must be wonderful. Oh, I don't take care for London life, but I must see my solicitors. I'm bringing you back a party of guests. Is Lady Blanche coming too? Yes. Uncle Edward, when are you going to get married? Next month, probably. And are you going to marry Lady Blanche? Why? Because I'd like to... Uh, I'd rather wish him... Oh, well, anyway, I'll be the flower girl. Adele, be careful. Lady Blanche Ingram becomes mistress here. What can I do now? But have you finished helping Sam already? Yes, he scrubbed pilot. What next? Well, uh, dust the bannock. All right. Again? Anything to keep her out of mischief. <laughs> I'm afraid we're not getting many lessons done these days. My darling, I don't want the ocean. Who oh, bring back my bunny to me? Oh, bring back, oh, bring back. Oh, bring back my bunny to me. Oh, 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 oh,
something. Do something. Oh. Are you all right, John? Oh, oh dear. You made short work of my porcelain, Miss Eyre. Well, I couldn't let the child suffocate to save your precious porcelain. <laughs> and I don't see anything to laugh at. So that's the new governess. Impertinent and uh, pretty. And very intelligent. Aha. Uh -huh. I'd rather not. But you can't refuse. You would offend him. Oh, he won't miss me. But he asked for you. I suppose I'll have to then. A little gas, he won't hurt you. Hurry up and dress, dear. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, dear. You're very solid, everyone. Oh, thank you. Come, Dad. Shall we go get some sweets? Oh, thank you. Yeah, you take my arm. Thank you. I assure you, Edward, you have no cause to worry. I'm confident the decision will be in your favor. Yes, but when? How long? That's my advice. Proceed with your plan. When the decision is handed down, I will personally deliver the document. Leave all these tiresome legal details to me. You have much more pleasant matters to attend to. Yes, yes. A business conference and a house full of guests. Edward, aren't you ashamed? And you, Charles. Can't you forget you're a barrister for just one evening? Back to your guests, sir. What are we coming to when a lady must say to a gentleman, this is my dance, I believe? <laughs> <laughs> Enter the beautiful governess. Excuse me a moment. Allow me. Good evening, sir. You're late? Yes. Your invitation came a bit late. Oh, I'm sorry. But sometimes I get absent-minded. May I have the pleasure? If you wish. Dress up. Because I didn't intend to appear as anything but what I am. The governess. You're a funny little thing, aren't you? But very charming. Are you laughing at me again? No. Dear Edward, always a charming host. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Miss Eyre. Lady Blanche Ingram and Mr. Craig. How do you do? Come along, darling. I have something to tell you. You excuse me. Shall we, darling? No, no, thank you. I must find Adele. Time to 
I'd better go to bed. Much too late for, really. Good night. Now tell me, what does Sir Roland resemble? A frog. A frog. <laughs> <laughs> and now tell me, what does Mrs. Wilkie look like? A giraffe. <laughs> a giraffe. <laughs> Mrs. Wilkie looks like a giraffe. <laughs> Dear. Can't you to go to bed? Oh, no, madam, please. <laughs> I haven't had so much fun since I retired from Parliament. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lottie, but it's bedtime for a dare. Oh, good night, dear. Good night. Uh, what mood do you have before you go? Tell me, what does Lord Ingram look like? Huh? A walrus! <laughs> Retiring so early. Edward, darling, why don't you urge Miss Eyre to return after she's put her charge to bed? She seems to be enjoying the party so thoroughly. But, Uncle Edward, may we stay to the end of your wedding party? I get absent-minded. May I have the pet? You're a funny little thing, aren't you? But very charming. Thank you. Why didn't you call for help? I didn't think it necessary to frighten your guests. I don't know how to thank you. It was nothing. Oh, your poor hands, why? They're burnt. Good night, sir. I'm leaving for London with my guests the first thing in the morning. May I say goodbye now? Goodbye. I 
thought I heard Adele running down the stairs. Isn't it time she was in bed? Yes, but she thought she heard the carriage again. Couldn't go to bed till she made sure. That makes the tenth time tonight. She wore the stairs out. I told her Mr. Rochester wasn't expected back for another week, but she wasn't convinced. There'll be great doings here when the master does get back. What with a wedding on the way, and her, I mean, Lady Blanche Ingram, so particular, being city bred. I don't think I shall be here. No. Oh. You won't let her drive you away, Miss Jane. It's been so pleasant having you here with us. I told you I heard the carriage, and it's you, Dr. Lesley. And just look what he brought me. Oh, good gracious, and his room isn't ready. And so prepared it. Isn't he lovely? I'm going to call him Friday because he's black. And that's the day Uncle Edward came home. Come in. Good evening. Good evening, sir. You've been well? Quite, thank you. And the injured hands? All healed. Uncle oh, Edward. Did you bring this arrow present, too? My darling. Well, of course. I really are. Oh, it's only a book. Sonnet of Shakespeare. It's lovely, don't you? There. May I ask a favor? I'm always glad to be of assistance, sir. The decorators are coming tomorrow to start refurnishing the West Wing. I want you to help select these. You know, seven years. Then you are planning to marry soon? In about a month. But are you sure I'll be able to do things? Excuse the lady's case. Quite sure. Very well. I'll do my best. Thank you. Adele, you must come to bed now. Do you get Friday sleep with me? No, I hardly think so. Not yet. I'll put him in the kitchen. Uncle Edward, stay a while. I want to talk to you. I won't stay long. I'll take the puppy. Good night, and thank you again for the book. Well, young lady, and what's the great problem? Uncle Edward, are you really going to get married? Certainly. Wouldn't you like to have a pretty aunt living here with us? If I could choose my own aunt. And whom would you choose? I think uh, Miss Eyre would make a lovely aunt. Really? But I don't think she'd have us. Perhaps she would. Why don't you ask her? Hmm. You ought to have been asleep an hour ago. I know. Do you ask her and I'll make her say yes. You think you could? Mm-hmm. That'd be very nice. I'm always glad to be of assistance, sir. <laughs> Good night. And thank you again for Friday. Good night. Uncle Edward. Well? Don't forget to ask her. May I present Mr. Halliburton? How do you do? How do you do? This was used by the Duchess of Laidlaw for her private dresses. A very suitable color, don't you think? A bit florid, in my opinion. Florid? Mm hmm. But of course, you know the lady's taste. Then I would suggest this with findings of uh, rose moire. I rather like this one. We prefer this. A very suitable choice. I congratulate the lady on her discriminating taste. The room will look delightful. I'm sure Mrs. Rochester will be charmed by it. About a piano. Have you any suggestions? I prefer a simple one. It can be decorated later to suit the lady. An excellent idea. And now will you come to the library? The jeweler is waiting. Do you really need me? Please. Very well. It is impossible to appreciate their real value unless one first tries them off. Now, if, if Madam would permit. Well, of course. You don't mind, do you?
Yes. Aren't they uh, beautiful? Beautiful? Perhaps madam would like to see the effect. No, thank you. Oh, come now. You must have some feminine vanity. They are beautiful. Seems foolish to admire oneself in ornaments. They must be taken off the next moment. Please make your selections. I'd like to go. Oh, but I want you to make the selections. I like these. But I'm sure Lady Blanche was the third diamond. <laughs> A diamond? We'll take these. May I go now? I've neglected Adele these past two weeks. Oh, but we haven't finished. I'm sorry, but I have a headache. You must excuse me. Miss Ella? Is anything wrong? Are you ill? No. But I need a rest. Now that you've finished with me, may I go away for a few days' holiday? If you wish. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss Air. I do hope you have a good time. Thank you, Adele. You'll be a good little girl now. Enjoy your holiday, dear, and come back well and strong. Thank you. Will you say goodbye to Mr. Rochester for me? Of course I will. Now do right. I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Are you going? Yes. What, without saying goodbye to me? Well, I asked Mrs. Fairfax to say goodbye for me. I... I didn't want to disturb you. I should have been more disturbed if you'd gone without my seeing you. There's something I must tell you. Will you come with me for a moment? Of course. See that I've been falling in love with you all this time. But Lady Blanche. All that ended in London. I realized then that what I wanted most I'd left behind me. You, Jane. And all this time you let me think it was for her? Well, I thought if you liked the house well enough, you might be willing to take me along with it as a part of the necessary evil. It was mean of you to trick me like that. You mustn't anymore. You must never deceive me again. I'll make up for that. Oh, I'm going to spoil you and pamper you. Cover you with jewels. Oh, no, you're not. If I wish. You learn to care for me as I am. And if I change, I'm afraid you'll stop. Deep with so What was that, is it? I wrote it a number of times. It frightens me. No, nothing to be alarmed about. But that mysterious side of the house. The fire in your room and that wild laughter. Is there anything wrong here? Jane, do you love me? I do. Then do you trust me? That's part of loving someone, isn't it? Then believe me, you have nothing to worry about. No, thank you. And when does the ceremony take place? As soon as my solicitor, Craig, arrives from London with an important legal document. Sam! Sam! We 
communicate this alcohol the power of flower. Will there be many guests? Very few. Only the immediate household and my solicitor, an old friend. Any relatives of the prize? None. Anything wrong? Your pardon, sir. A new, sir. We can decorate this arch with smilax. It will be most effective. And the bride can come through. Edward, my husband. I've come such a long way. I've been searching for you everywhere. Uh, well, I say, I... Oh, we're going to be married again. Are you one of the wedding guests? Better go to your room, Bertha. Edward, who is she? What does she mean? Bertha! Oh, no, 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 come along. You can't separate me from my husband again. No, I shall. No, dear, of course not. No, 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 no. no. Oh, no. Your wife. What does this mean, sir? Yes. She's been insane for years. The marriage is being annulled. That's the legal document I was expecting my solicitor to bring. Oh, really? Then you won't need me until it arrives. I wish you good day, sir. Edward, why didn't you tell me? Because I loved you. I wanted to spare you. Forgive me. I hoped it wouldn't be necessary for you to know. But I was afraid of losing the only happiness that has come into my life after all these miserable years. I've done what I could for her. But the specialists have pronounced her mania incurable, hereditary. I kept her here in the care of Mrs. Poole, rather than send her to an institution. Don't you see? It was the only way. Jane, please try and forgive me. Please. I'm afraid you'll have to come. She's so violent, we can't manage her. Wait here for me, please. Good night, sir. Good night, Mrs. Fairfax.
special courier has just arrived from London, sir, with his document. It's from Mr. Craig. He says it's very important. Jane, she's gone. She can't have gone very far, sir. You're right. The engine, the houseman. I've searched everywhere for him. We won't start looking for him now. I'm your man, Walter. Where is he there? She's gone, dear. Is everyone out? Everyone except the poor creatures. She's fired the house and she's in it. We couldn't find her. There she is. I'm going, sir. Give him a chance. Uncle Edward, please come back. Gentlemen wishes to see you. Very well. Come in. Miss Sarah, have you definitely decided to go to India with us? Yes, I have. You realize it will be hardly a pleasure trip. Are you trying to discourage me, Mr. Rivers? On the contrary. I want you to come with me. Not as my assistant, sir, but as my wife. Your wife? Yes. It sounds somewhat abrupt, I know, since I've never given you any reason to surmise that I felt that way about you. In that strange country, a white woman needs the protection of a husband. It will be a good work for humanity. I'm sure you will give me great assistance and happy companionship. Thank you, Mr. Rivers. I shall think it over and let you know. Stand there and calmly ladle out beans soup when you're going to be married within an hour. Some girls don't appreciate their luck. He's so wonderful. If I were in your shoes, I'd be walking on air. But if I catch the plague, I'll make the dying wish that he married you. Oh, I say, will you? I'll go get your things ready for you. Here? 
Things has changed. Thornfield's gone. Gone? Aye. Well, it was a fair night and a fine moon. And me and the missus was locking up the place. Who well, said to the missus, I... Oh, never mind all that, Sam. Oh, sister, the missus, I says... It's dangerous business keeping that lunatic here. Oh, please, Sam. Oh, well. She burned the house down the night she left me. Down to the ground. She did that? Oh, the poor thing. And burned to death in it, too. Oh, how horrible. But Edward, Mr. Rochester, is he safe? But he would try to save her. Oh, was he hurt? The flames was roaring, and the master disappeared. But how is he? Where is he? He's living in the caretaker's cottage. Because I was trying to tell you, Thornfield. my teeth. What's wrong with this place? Well, why don't you answer? I brought your tea, Edward. Say that again. I brought your tea, Edward. Is it really you again? I heard only yesterday what had happened. I got here as quickly as I could. Of you to call me, sir. Do you have some tea? Have you been well? I hope you're well situated. I've come back here to be with you, Edward. Pity me. No, I don't. Yes, pity, pity. Strange. You pity me when I'm blind. And yet when I was worse than blind, you had no mercy. I didn't it is true, I tell you. We don't belong to each other. We never did. You went out of my life once. Please go now. Is there anything wrong, sir? Mrs. Fairfax? Yes, Mr. Rock. Has she gone? No, I haven't gone. And I'm not going. You want me to know you do. Nothing has changed. I belong here with you, my dear. I'll never leave you again. Uncle Edward, you are gay. 